Hi everyone, welcome back to Canadian Victory Garden. I'm Sarah, thanks for joining. So today's video is midwinter, getting ready to plan the garden for the spring and the summer. Um, See, catalogs are here, very exciting, favorite time. But what we really wanna do before we start going through the seed catalogs is figure out what we feel like planting. So you have to go back to your notes from the garden from last year and remember, remind yourself what worked really well, what you wanted to improve a little bit, new things that you wanted to try. So I like to do that by starting with a garden plan. So this is a really rough diagram from overhead of the gardening beds that we have. It's not to scale, these beds are five feet by 20 feet. And I wrote in each bed what had grown in the bed last year because you have to rotate your crops, they can't grow in the same spot every year. First of all, because they deplete specific nutrients. For example, corn depletes the nitrogen very quickly. So this bed will be depleted of nitrogen this year. Um, also, you want to rotate to avoid pests, you know, accumulating and knowing exactly where to go to attack your crops. So by rotating your crops, it, it confuses the pests. So I've written in what each bed had planted in it last year, or in the case of the garlic, and the rye, what's actually currently planted in those garden beds. So I know that for this bed and this bed, I won't be planting any summer crops because the garlic will stay in that bed all through the spring, all through the summer and be harvested probably in September. I can, however, plant things around it. As you can see, I've decided I'm gonna try some sweet potatoes and some spinach in this bed, and I'm gonna try some peppers and some basil in this bed. The nice thing about garlic is it starts coming up very quickly, very early in the season. So by the time you're ready to plant in your peppers, you'll know if you have some little spaces to plant extra plants in. And also taking advantage of the different layers um, that things grow at. And for this bed, the spinach will hide underneath of the sweet potatoes and will be slower to bolt. So it, I hope it works out really well. So. Uh, I decided to plant crops that my family likes to eat that we had success with last year, uh, peas. We ate through our peas like crazy, so I'm going to plant peas in at least three beds, if not four. We want to try the broccoli and the cabbage again, which we didn't have success with last year, but I need to cover it with a row cover this year. And um, other things that we wanted to plant more of or just making myself notes for succession planting such as I'm going to do the peas which will be done very early in the spring so then I can plant in some summer crops in those ones and a note not to plant any more than two zucchini plants this year. So after I figure out what I want to plant then I need to go to my seed packs to make sure that I don't buy seeds that I already have and that I'm using up my old seeds so that things just aren't going to waste because the whole idea here is that we're trying to save money by growing our own crops and saving our own seeds and not just spending money on seeds that then are no longer germinating and we throw into the compost. After I figured out what I actually want to plant in my garden this year, I then have to go and find out what my last frost date is in the area, which for this year will be May 8th for us. And then this is the way I like to plan it out. I work backwards. So one week to last frost, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and so on and so forth. And then I go through my seed packs and I write down when each of those seeds needs to be started indoors or if it needs to be direct sown, I make a note about that. Usually you direct sow after frost, although some packages say just before the frost is in the same week that your last frost will happen. So I go through pack by pack by pack You'll find the directions on the back of the seed package telling you when to plant them uh, to do indoor sowing. So this is a spinach, so that is a direct sow outside generally. Whereas this is a new one I haven't tried before, an uh, heirloom variety of celery. And celeries usually need to be started four to eight weeks before. I like to do the the later time rather than the earlier time. Although with celery, if you're not going to be eating all of the crop at once or preparing all of the crop at once, for example, tomatoes, you want them all to be ready at the same time. We don't want that with celery because we're a small family and we probably can't eat that many heads of celery, stalks of celery at one time. So you can stagger plant from eight weeks up to four weeks. So I would write celery in under eight weeks, seven weeks, six weeks, five weeks, and four weeks, just to remind myself to do a couple of plantings all the way along there. 
So after I've gone through my giant box of seeds and sorted them into when I need to start them indoors, this is what it looks like. I have seed packs that I've purchased, seed packs from last year, seed packs that are new, and also seeds that I've saved from the harvest last year. This is also a really good way to figure out which seeds you still need to purchase for the upcoming season, and that's finally when your seed catalogs come into play. When I went and purchased some seed packs that I wanted to try planting, I found these interesting instructions, start seeds anytime from late winter to late summer, which basically means I can plant them now or later or stagger them. So I'm gonna plant some of these today. We've already got a bunch of things planted down here though. The onions I planted in January, and I have a bunch of lettuces going, and it was time to get those strawberry seeds planted. So I've got strawberry seeds, choys, rue, and some lettuce seeds. We'll see if they sprout. I did forget to mention the last frost date is something you can look up online, last frost date with your location, and the internet will tell you based on where your location is and your zones when the last likely frost is to happen. Now that doesn't mean that you're not for sure not going to get any more frosts after that time. Sometimes you do get more frosts, but generally speaking, you're safe to put things out after the last frost date based on your package directions. So thanks again for tuning in to the Canadian Victory Garden. I'm excited to get planting. I hope you are too.